been a while since I've done a video. I uh, would like to tell you up front, you'll hear noise in the background. My apologies. I have a day and a half print on the 3D printer. It's going to take a bit of time. Uh, so I wanted to try something different instead of like the typical techie thing that I'll do. Um, this is my virtual lab, Windows 10, whatever, uh, ESXi. This I wanted to do. My son is in, he's in the Dungeons and Dragons club at school. Yeah, all us geeks were or are. Um, I played D&D &D for a while, played Shadowrun, played Werewolf. Um, so there's a couple others. It's been so long, I forget. Um, so I wanted to show you, so I was searching things on Facebook and Google and, you know, stuff starts bleeding into Facebook and Facebook turned around and showed I could just buy a dungeon. I was like, you know what? Maybe I could buy one for my son for Christmas. I started looking. Like a two-room dungeon was 50 bucks. A six- or eight-room dungeon was 250 bucks. And they're really small. And I was like, no, 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 no. I was like, I don't like the uh, price of that. And then I was Googling, and I found Devin Jones. The files are on Thingiverse and on My Mini Factory. I like My Mini Factory. kind of organizes it. You just go to uh, mymanyfactory.com slash user slash Devin Jones. And I want to thank you, Devin. Uh, I really appreciate it. I was trying to look into how I could create my own dungeon pieces. I still would like to. Um, there's a lot of great stuff up here. He's got, if you look here, he's got tons of stuff. Now, on a Reddit post, uh, that's where the forums are for this now. And there's a lot of people... Not a lot, but some people saying, where do I start and all this stuff. It is challenging uh, because there's different things you need to understand. First one is, if I go here, it's called Dungeon Stone Wall on Tile Walls, full set. Which means this one two by two square actually has the wall or door or whatever on top of it. As you see back here, see if it gets bigger. as you see back here, this is a uh, secret door and it spins, right? That's great. But in D&D, &D, when you got to move two spaces or whatever, and if you're using miniatures, they won't quite fit well. So you can do this. There's also off wall, off floor walls. So you just have to find the items. Um, like you can see all the things that are in here. A lot of, lot of great stuff, really, really good designs. Uh, curve walls, you go through, and you have to find out what you're looking for. Here we go. Cut stone, separate wall, curve. So these are going to be the curve, but as you notice, they're separate. Okay. There's the floors. Now I'm still learning, so most likely I'm going to be wrong on some of this, so I apologize. What I did was I downloaded a ton of the files, okay, uh, because it can be overwhelming and not sure what to do. My goal is to mimic, let me bring it over here for you, Sunless Citadel. My uh, nephew told me about it, and the reason why I replicate this is pretty simple. If you can replicate this, you see there are, I think T's treasure, not sure. Yeah, circle room, there's squares, bigger squares, there's rectangles, there's columns or pillars, whatever you want to call them. And there's a lot of various size items you'll create. Now, I started, and as you can see down here, I have to update this because this is actually wrong. I'll show you here on Excel. I started tracking it on this picture. Then I said, screw it. Let me do it in Excel. So in Excel, I have a corridor down here, but that doesn't stop here. It actually goes around the corner and up with, and I wrote here, corridor. One three by floor, one four by floor, four four by walls, one two by one wall, one three by one wall. I need to also add in here, one three floor, four floor, one by two floor, one by one floor, okay? and at the end of this we will put two doors okay now that's what i printed and i did that wrong and i will show you in a minute though so what i've been tracking is 
the item, how long it's going to take to print. And this is on low quality. This isn't even high quality. And then material, how many grams it's going to print. So that way I know it's a 1,000 1, gram roll, 1 kilogram roll. I can get an idea how close I am to running out. And then the cost. I will show you that. That's in Cura. Just actually just found it. It's really cool. Uh, it's something simple you probably knew about, but it'll help you with that. Um, here's the open lock is the structure I'm using. And then here's room 11 about what I have here. Up oh, two doors. So really, I can knock the door off up here. But yeah, just figuring it out. That way in the future, I am, if somebody goes, how much it costs you? It costs you 200 bucks to print this or whatever. Now, what I didn't know is what the S was. I didn't think I didn't think about it. They're secret doors. So probably what I'll have to do is when I build this room, I have a door already printed. I'm going to get rid of it. I'm going to print one, two, three, four, five, six. I think the secret doors are three by three, one by threes, which is great because I could you do a normal, normal um, wall and then a wall with a secret door. And I have to do another secret door here and a secret door here. So I kind of goofed, but the point is I'm not, I'm going to mimic this, but it's not going to be a permanent structure. Once I mimic it and tear it all apart, you'll be able to do things. Um, you'll be able to create your own stuff. All right, so with all that, I also would like to show you the files. All right, so here we go, right? Here are my files. The way I organized this was my dungeon, files used, and here are the files I've used so far. Here's my doors, one by four, one by three, one by two, one by one. Open lock. This is called open lock. I don't know what the other one is called. Let me see. Do I have them in here now? But see these pillars. See this lock? It just says T plus sides. Um, I did originally print out, print out floor pieces with this, and I printed out walls like that. And I will show you. There were things I didn't like about it. No, not saying the author Devin did anything wrong. There's so many different types of things, and I, I don't know if open lock is newer or older. I'm still researching all this on my own. Uh, let's go ahead and show you some things here. All right, so hide this one now. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here's what I printed so far that you saw. Now, a couple things to point out here. This is probably my mistake, but as I mentioned, there's a door. There's a door here. They got to be redone. I'll have to do a uh, secret door. I do like the quality. This camera is a crappy camera. There's a there's a DSLR that'll show the picture better. High quality. Get some light on that better. Um, and this is done in low quality, 0.28 in Cura, which I will show you that later. But look at the bottom. You can see all the connectors and everything. Uh, it was a challenge putting this together. Um, I started printing out originally. I'll show you. I started printing out these guys. Yeah, these guys. Um, I had them join like this. All right, and then I started doing the walls. And the problem I had, I'll show you here, is two things. One, well, I can't go between them. So I have a three. I printed out a three. All right. That didn't line up as well on that one. They line up here, but that's on a. That would be like, like that. And if I had a wall kicking off this way, that would work. So maybe that's what this is for. I'm not sure. Um, on the four piece, I do have this guy. And it does. It lines up. The problem I had is when I did this, okay, and the lock went in here, and then the lock went in here. They banged into each other. And I had issues. I don't know if it was on the four. I think it was the three. So these are not useless pieces. They're printed out. Keep them around. The 
time that I have now is this. Actually, it's, as you see, this wall here, it doesn't line up. But see, see, you just cut them out. These don't line up. Uh, I don't have nothing really to show you. Um, now, here we go here. This guy here, it won't match. So, yeah, I mean, if I'm playing D&D &D and I'm, I'm DM and I'm building it, there's no harm in me just throwing this together like this. It's fine. It is nice to have it like this, though. And say, okay, here we go. We're good to go. Um, so that's what I got going on. Started printing out. Just wanted to show you. Um, like I said, um, so the one thing that I did do, let me show you back over here. In my files here. So I'm, and these are files used, but before I stuck them in this folder, I had stuff out here. What I did was I drag, I drag these in the Cura, and one is one inch. Yeah, it's a one inch square, one square. So one. 1.5, 2, and 4. There's no 3. There's no 2.5. Yeah, you can do a 1.5 and, and a 1. Hope these pieces align. And that's kind of where I'm going to go here to do this. However, now I realize um, this guy. Wait. Uh, oh, let me show you. This one here is a four but if i can get a smaller like a two and a 1.5 will be a 3.5 i can then do a wall this way and then it would click on so yeah this is the big thing it's about printing out a mess of walls and then trying to build it all right so that was the first piece just wanted to show you this um you end up with, like I said, you start printing, end up with all kinds of extra pieces, stuff. And the whole point is tear it all apart, eventually put them in storage bins, Ziploc, not Ziploc, but like, uh, Tupperware or something so you can organize it. Here we go. Here goes an example of a good wall. See, it's a lot nicer. You cut out where you want. However, you do have to pay attention. It's here and here. If you look inside, there's an inset. You can't cut that. So I can cut here, I can cut here, or I can cut here. Theoretically, I could have done this, but it won't match up on the corner here. So it's about playing around with it. All right. That's what I have for this video. And thank you. And we're going to do another one in just a minute.